What's going on, everybody? Jeff Holiday here, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to talk about vaccines. Yay! We're going to talk about something that is also not good, but is rather interesting. Something very fascinating happened uh, within the past two days, and that is Russia decided to use a missile to blow up a satellite. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am a huge space nerd. I watch lots of space content. Sci-fi is my favorite genre of, of media to enjoy. And so I, I am very invested in these types of things. I just don't usually get the chance to talk about them on my channel because I'm dealing with other you know impending crises and things like that. So today, we're going to look into it. So let's look at a couple of these articles and uh, see if we can get a grasp on, on what's happening. And then we'll talk about the further ramifications. In first, Russian test strikes satellite using Earth-based missile. Russia conducted a strike against a Soviet-era satellite in space on Monday, creating more than 1,500 pieces of debris that U.S. officials said pose a reckless risk and show Moscow's insincerity when it comes to not wanting to weaponize space. Space! Now, to understand this, we also have to understand a little bit more about who owns space. Largely, space is not really owned by anybody. We have an upper limit to how far we believe there is airspace over a nation, and then everything outside of it is kind of like international waters. Uh, Joe Scott, Answers with Joe, did a fascinating video called Who Owns Space? I highly recommend it. Go check it out. And suffice to say that we, we don't really have any legal protections for things that happen in space. So it's not like we can call the space cops on Russia for being reckless. I have an incoming ship. He's being pursued by the space cops. Space cops. Uh, with, with blowing up a satellite. So instead, we have to use diplomacy. And uh, they, they didn't really seem to give that much of a, much of a shit, unfortunately. The test marked the first time that Russia has demonstrated an ability to strike a satellite using a missile launched from Earth. During a briefing, State Department spokesman Ned Price said the anti-satellite test created more than 1,500 pieces of sizable debris that could damage other satellites or affect astronauts at the International Space Station. This is also very, very bad because it, the, way, the way in which you can just simply shoot a, a missile up into space and destroy a satellite also shows that uh, these satellites that can be used for information gathering, reconnaissance, et cetera, et cetera, you can disable your enemy or your, com your competition's ability to do that. And kind of, uh, I would say, in, in my opinion, Russia doing this is basically kind of showing off, you know, showing off that, hey, we can do this. It's, uh, it's a demonstration of power. Earlier today, the Russian Federation recklessly conducted a destructive test of a direct ascent anti-satellite missile against one of its own satellites. And again, it uh, generated all of this debris. Not good news. And we'll get to the further ramifications in just a little bit. Now, it's also very strange that they would do this because it's not really in their best interests. And this, this further goes on to explain why. It's inexplicable that they would do this and threaten not only our astronauts after we've cooperated in space since 1975, but threaten their own cosmonauts. He noted, and this is uh, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, he noted that NASA astronaut Mark Van Hai, who flew up to the station as part of the Russian crew, evacuated the station with the Russian cosmonauts and sought shelter with them in the Russian Soyuz attached to the station. That's the International Space Station. They saw that they were going to be flying into a debris field, which they believe is caused by this, uh, this blown-up satellite. And so they put their own cosmonauts into jeopardy. Uh, he said he would not be surprised if his counterpart at the Russian space agency, Dmitry Rogozin, didn't know a thing about this, and it's the Russian military doing their thing. There is currently a NASA delegation in Russia, and he said he believes that members of the Russian space agency didn't know anything about this, and they're probably just as appalled as we are. Now, just for further clarification, this isn't the only time something like this has happened, but it's the most brazen and the most explosive. China conducted an anti-satellite weapons test using a projectile launched from Earth in 2007. The following year, the United States struck one of its own spy satellites that was malfunctioning and expected to crash to Earth. 
India conducted a kinetic anti-satellite test in 2019. All right, so for the next part, we're going to look at the Ars Technica article about this. It's got a little bit more of the technical details, so we can, we can more understand what the problem is. So this is referring to them having to take shelter. Had there been a collision during the conjunction, the two spacecraft would have been able to detach from the space station, the Soyuz module and the regular space station, and do an emergency return to Earth. Ultimately, it was not necessary, but Mission Control was asking them to keep as many of the hatches shut as possible, just in case there was a breach somewhere. Uh, nobody's going to get sucked out into space. But what's really, really strange about this is uh, it appears that the Russia launched a service-to-space Nudal missile on Monday between 0 to 100 and 0500 UTC uh, from a Cosmodrome in the northern part of the country. The missile then struck an older satellite, Cosmos 1408, launched in 1982. The satellite had been slowly losing altitude and was little more than 450 kilometers above Earth. It was a very, very big satellite by comparison, a mass of about 2,000 kilograms. Um, and now they're tracking well over, again, 1,500 pieces of debris. So this is where things get a little complicated because space has a lot of stuff in it. Space! A whole lot. And as we, we can see here, uh, it, it detonated around 450 kilometers above the Earth. A debris cloud like that in space can increase exponentially and spread out. So yes, it could absolutely hit the International Space Station. Like for reference, right now, the International Space Station, we can see, is 420 kilometers above the Earth. And that is only a 20 kilometer difference from where the satellite, or a 30 kilometer difference from where the satellite was detonated. And as that debris cloud spreads, it can, again, become a, a potential hazard and danger for the International Space Station, as well the Chinese space station that they're currently constructing. As it grows, it can also have a cascade effect, and that is also known as the Kessler effect. And that's what we really have to pay attention to. The Kessler effect is a concept that was postulated uh, by a man named Kessler in which if you have a bunch of debris in space, as it drifts, if it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere, but continues to float in low Earth orbit, it can collide with more objects, thus rendering them more destroyed and creating more debris. It becomes an exponential growing problem, where as things are shredded, they become more pieces, they shred more things, they become more pieces. Next thing you know, the entire goddamn planet is surrounded by trash. Space trash. And I, if granted, they're not always the most technologically accurate, but movies like Gravity can show you that very, very small little pieces of things in space can be deadly. Very deadly. And that can interrupt not only our ability to do space exploration, but also have things like, um, you know, satellites that connect the world through connectivity, um, keeping information sources alive. I, it, it's, it's hard to explain how potentially dangerous this can be. But to really put a broader perspective on it, this is a satellite map from the ESRI. Now, we can, we, can, we can zoom out here. That is a lot of stuff. That is a lot, a lot of stuff. 1,900 and... Well, 19,176 satellites loaded just into this one. And these are various different things, mostly satellites, mostly satellites. But as you can see, the closer you get in, the more busy and the more clustered it is. And a lot of these have perigees that come really, really close to where that debris cloud is. The closer and closer you get to the Earth, the more likely that the trash will burn up in the atmosphere. But it also can spread out and cause a, a cascade event, the Kessler effect. But really, to, to drill this home, why space junk is such a problem? 19,000, right? 19,000 pieces. Let's just, let's just select only the junk. 13 out of that 19,000 is garbage. Satellite debris, rockets, boosters, just pieces of trash or defunct satellites. Not junk, normal satellites, only about 5,600. That's a problem. That's a really big problem. So what's the solution to it? Well, there are several different agencies that have been working on different manners of cleaning up space and trying to get rid of some junk, but it's incredibly expensive. And nobody wants to do it because people want to use space to either make money or further 
uh, further knowledge, not a whole lot of people want to become the garbage men of the solar system. That's not really something that a lot of people are interested in, but it's something that we're going to have to address, especially with our, our renewed interest in space with Blue Origin and SpaceX and, and Virgin Galactic and all these new companies wanting to move like the human race into space. We need to be addressing this stuff because if we don't, it could have an immense impact and set us back for decades and decades and decades, as well as cripple vital infrastructure that we use for our modern lives. So uh, what happened the other day in Russia was awful. And uh, we, we, need to, we need to find some real good ways in which to uh, discourage countries from trashing up our solar system because it belongs to all of us. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for your attention. Hope you're well. Hope your family's well. Hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Very sure on the description down below. See you next time. Yeah.